Hey, Monica, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me today, Ray. Yeah, you're very welcome. Uh, this is kind of the first of this new style of video I'm doing. And uh, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to have a bunch of different photographers on and Monica here is the first one to do it. And they chose five photos of other photographers that they really liked. And I chose five photos as well. And we're just going to kind of share them on the screen and talk about what we liked and, and why we chose them. Um, Great. And uh, Monica, I just wanted to ask uh, you know, a real quick intro about yourself and how long you've been doing photography, but also how did you come up with that Instagram handle, which is uh, walking Google one? Uh, it's, it's really funny. Um, so I've been, I got into photography in 2017, uh, watching some seals down on the shoreline of Connecticut. Nice. And what, what got me into birding was I had a great horned owl fly over my head, um, land in a nearby tree. So that really, oh, that's really cool that really shot everything off for me. Um, and then I really started learning all the different birds and really getting interested in, um, photographing them. Yeah. So when it comes to my Instagram handle, it's really funny. I was given this nickname, I think last year. Okay. Um, so I've given a couple of, um, tours around different parks in Connecticut. Oh, cool. Um, to, to people that are just getting into birds and not, um, that don't shoot just birds. Yeah. Um, so they were asking me, what's that bird? What's that bird? What's that bird making that sound? Um, and I could easily tell them what that what bird was. So You're rattling the uh, species off, huh? I, I don't know all of them, but, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Nice. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. Hey, that's a great name, though. Yeah. Yeah. Walking Google. They're, they're like, hey, you're like a living, breathing Google. <laughs> I'm like, that's unique enough. I'll just put that as my nickname. Totally. Yeah, that's really cool. Excellent. So how long have you been doing photography, did you say? Uh, since the beginning of 2017, late 2016. Okay. Wow. Yeah, not that long. So it's gr growing quickly, which is awesome. I'm trying. All right. Excellent. All right. You ready to jump into this? I am. All right. So uh, I'm going to start with one of the photos you chose, and I'll tell you what I like about it, and then you can tell me why you chose it after that. All right? Great. All right. Cool. Um, so at first it looks like a tricolored heron, but as soon as I read the caption, you know, it just says it's a very special heron, a hybrid, uh, a little blue tricolored heron hybrid, which is really cool. So, uh, aside from reading the caption, had I not seen the caption, I don't know that I would have picked up on that. I would have just thought like, ah, oh, yeah, interesting. It, it has more tricolored traits. Uh, but once I see that, I can, I can kind of see how it has that, but, um, this is just a, uh, like a real nice portrait, you know? Uh, it's really cool to have like the one leg up and like the, uh, the feet kind of coming out there, which is funny. And then sometimes it's these little touches that make a photo like kind of stand out and this feather falling just in the midair from probably, I'm guessing like a preening session or something like that. It's just like such a cool little touch to the photo um, that make it just a nice photo over and above the fact that it's probably a super, super rare bird uh, would be my guess. So uh, do you have a little bit more backstory on this photo? So this bird has been coming to Connecticut, Madison, Connecticut, actually where I live, uh, for, I've been told about eight years now. Wow. Um, so it comes back every summer. Um, I thought it was just a normal little blue heron. Yeah. Um, but especially in breeding plumage, it starts getting the white line down its chest. That's a signature tricolored trait. Yeah. Um, but this is also a very cooperative, cooperative bird. Oh, that's cool. Um, so it's it's really been easy to photograph and it's a, nice. it's a great bird yeah yeah and it's surprising that it's um friendly usually you think of kind of rare birds and they're not uh you know they're more like secluded and kind of secretive but uh yeah good for you guys and you've been so able to I, photograph it a few times as well huh uh multiple times actually oh that's um, really cool so you know it's funny I, oops, Go ahead. sorry so what i really like about this photo actually is like like you said the feather floating i yeah. she was my friend karen who took this was actually able to get quite a bit of detail in that one little feather that that is off floating yeah yeah it's right it, in the focal plane it's perfect right and if you look actually if you look closely at one at the bill yeah uh you'll see a feather stuck to the bill yep yep so so i guess it was like mid preening probably it was yep yeah that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, it's funny. You mentioned that uh, when you first saw it, you just thought traditionally just like little blue. And 
uh, when I look at this photo, it screams more tricolored heron to me. Uh, so what, what parts of the bird kind of made you think little blue more than tricolored? Well, when I, when I first saw this bird, I was actually new to birding. So I really gotcha. didn't have an, I really didn't have many species under my belt. Like okay. I never knew there was a tricolored heron. Gotcha. Um, but I think it was 2018 when I actually started to photograph the bird. I actually started picking up the different traits. Like the bill on this bird is actually longer than a traditional little blue. And yeah. the bill actually tips down, as you can see in this photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very cool. And then just kind of, I mean, I can't say that I've seen a lot of little blue herons in breeding plumage. Uh, so I don't know. They, I don't think they get quite as long feathers like on the neck and on the back and like back here as uh, tricolors do. Or do they? Maybe they do. I don't know. I've only seen tricolors a handful of times, so I couldn't okay. couldn't answer that one. But yeah, so I think just those longer feathers like that kind of kind of indicating more. So cool, yeah, uh, nice choice there, picking out a, an oddball bird. Uh, anything else you want to mention about this before we move on to the next one? Nope. All right, cool, excellent. That's pretty much covered. All right, it. so here's one I chose. So what do you Ooh. think? That is awesome. Uh, what yeah. kind of fishes are those? uh let's see he doesn't say in the caption but um just looking based on the photo i'm thinking it's a sailfish that's a really cool bird i've never actually seen a sailfish in person yeah so it's really cool seeing that actual fin that gives them their name exactly yeah seeing it up like that with the fish there pretty cool and on the side you can kind of see a, a cross hatching pattern almost on the side of the scales which is kind of neat yeah yep and I yeah, like how the how the fish in the background is actually kind of making the smaller fish go up, like yep. kind of make a little pattern. Yeah, it's a really nice shape back there. Have you ever tried underwater photography? No, but that's definitely on my bucket list. Is it? Definitely. I want to go snorkeling, scuba diving. Would love to see those guys. Yeah. Sure. Have you ever been uh, snorkeling or scuba diving? Do you count snorkeling in uh, Discovery Cove in Florida? Snorkeling? <laughs> I mean, technically it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you haven't done it outside, like in a more wild scenario? I have not yet. but Okay. All right. No. Cool. Yeah, I unfortunately cannot scuba dive. I had uh, a two random collapsed lungs when I was younger. Uh, or younger, I was in my 20s. And... Um, after that, they said, like, you cannot scuba dive. So that's uh, that's out for me. Uh, but I can snorkel, so I could do shallow water stuff. But I've never done underwater photography either. So from all the friends I have that do it, they have all said it is by far the hardest uh, type of wildlife photography, which totally makes sense, you know. Um, yeah. Just so many things you're dealing with. But uh, I, have to yeah. I have to imagine the current is pushing you. That's Just all kinds of things, right, you know. Like we're photographing birds up on land. One of generally one of the things we don't have to worry about is survival. You know, like, do you have enough air to breathe? Are you doing everything right to, you know, not die while you're doing it? And you kind of have to add that into doing it if you're doing like scuba diving and stuff like that. You right. know, um, and then yeah, out in this, I assume this has to be kind of out in the middle of the the ocean. Um, and uh, yeah, I really love this photo. You know, the light, obviously, I'm not obviously, but I think he probably did a pop of flash in here to kind of really illuminate the, the foreground sail and the fish, um, just because I don't think these colors would naturally show uh, without some additional light. And then, yeah, just having the other fish back there kind of helping out the composition and just the shape of these bait fish here. And this one's like actively fishing in the background right there. Uh, right. And then actually, I just now noticed there's a fourth fish right here and then actually a fifth one right there. So uh, there's definitely quite a few sailfish going on there. So there's a lot going on in the photo, like the more you look at it, you know. It almost looks like a painting to me, actually. It really does. It really does, yeah. And this guy, um, Sean Henricks, does just a ton of, as you can see, just a ton of great underwater stuff. And uh, so, so definitely worth checking out. All right. Ready to move on to the next one? Yes, ma'am. All right. Look at this. Nice little Tennessee warbler portrait. Uh, very cool. You know what? The first thing that jumps out at me is how the background color like matches the uh, the bird's color. 
So that's really, really cool. And uh, I always love on warblers when you get this cool look back pose where you're actually looking at the back of the bird, but then the bird has turned its head back. So you're actually still getting the eye contact. And so, you know, not that it's completely an uncommon pose, but it's certainly less common than the standard like facing forward or just profile bird shot. Uh, so I always think that's kind of neat. And then also uh, interesting behavior as far as it's on like a big chunky perch. It's doing like a little bit of like clinging here, kind of almost like a woodpecker or a, a nuthatch or something. And uh, I know not all bird or uh, all warblers do that. Um, but so, so that kind of makes it like a little bit more unique as well. Cause usually you're just, I'm used to seeing them on like kind of more tiny dainty perches. So, uh, I thought that one was, this is a, is, is a really solid portrait of a bird that I don't get to see. In fact, I don't even know if, I don't think I have any good photos of the species. So. Yeah. I, I just got, uh, a few, my first photos of one this year, actually. Oh, nice. Congrats. So that's partly why, I, why I picked this picture. This is my friend Jillian who took this. Um, so okay. shout out to her. Um, but she's, I mean, yeah, that you basically took the words right out of my mouth. I mean, the first <laughs> thing I saw when I saw this, I was like, what? What is that warbler doing? It's acting like a, a brown creeper or nuthatch. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I've seen, like, black, obviously black and white. Sure. Bl black and white warblers do it. Even to an extent, yellow rumps will kind of yep. cling hop up the tree, but I've never seen another warbler do it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I know I've photographed uh, yellow-throated have done it. I've seen Parula do it. Um, trying to think what else. But yeah, not it's not like a common thing, you know, uh, for sure. I think I've even, I think I've maybe even seen Prairie do it, but I can't be sure on that. But yeah, not a lot of warbler species do that. So yeah, it makes it really unique. So that's pretty cool. And she got, and, and she got such detail in the feathers. Like I can actually almost picture picture how so picture the the feathers themselves picture the bird right in front of me that's yep. that's how sharp this picture was yeah lots of clarity on it definitely yeah yeah which is always nice and nice soft light too i didn't even mention the light but you know just nice soft like real soft kind of rim lighting coming in from the back there it's not like harsh crazy sun or anything like that so uh yeah definitely definitely has a lot of things working for it and it's always cool when you see the wings like crossed back there you know right yeah, very cool. Uh, does your friend Jillian photograph a lot of warblers? She's she's getting um, she lives in the northwest of Connecticut, so yeah, they d they do tend to get more okay variety of warblers than the coast coast does. But this was her latest warbler, which is great. Nice, uh, yeah, very cool. Nice choice, nice choice. I have All to right, say it's one I got of my this favorite one for warblers. you. Yeah, what do you think of this one? Oh, I love the pastels, how the, how the, I don't know if it's the sky comboed yep. with the ocean, but it's kind of the pink on the top combined with the blue. It it's it really lends a lot of peace to the image. Right. It does. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of losing myself in it actually. Cause you can't tell where the water begin water ends and then the sky begins, you know? Yep. Yeah. And there's no movement at all in the water. That's, that's amazing. Really calm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you kind of uh, nailed all the points that I have about that photo, too. So this is from my friend Cam. And uh, I've done some he's done some workshops with me. He was actually on my um, on the uh, the audio podcast. He was one of the first guests on that. He may have actually been the first guest. I don't remember. Anyway, um, he photographed this. Where did he do this? Uh, I don't think he says, but it's somewhere up in, where does he stay? Somewhere up in the Northeast anyway. Uh, he goes up there for the summer with his family. And uh, yeah, I really like what you pointed out. You know, obviously the colors are amazing. And, you know, uh, I'm a big fan of spacious compositions like this. But uh, that lack of no horizon, I think, is really, really cool. And something I've only been able to achieve like a very small handful of times. And uh it's such a neat thing where that horizon just blends seamlessly into right. the calm water like that. And, and you kind of, yeah, it's just like the birds like floating in space, you know, it's such a wild look. Um, but the con con conditions certainly have to be right for it. And the habitat has to be right. You know, if you have any pieces of grass or like distant, you know, shrubs or anything like that, it's going to give you a horizon line. So, right. um, yeah, really, really cool that he managed to pull that off with this one. And another thing about this photo, I can actually place myself in his eyes. Like I, I can actually imagine 
being where he took this picture and just it's amazing. I mean, very few photos I find can actually transport me there. And he did it. He did it for me. It's a great thing when a photo does that. That's a really good point. Yeah. You can just kind of almost fit like the car. It's gotta be, obviously it's like quiet, right? Cause there's no wind, no ripples on the water. So yeah, just that, that quietness of being out in kind of a marshy area. Yeah. He said it's like a small tidal area. Um, I don't even know if he said in the morning. Yeah. So early morning. So yeah, pretty cool. All right. Let's see what we got next. Look at this screech. <laughs> That's great. Um, you know what? I mean, just a hilarious expression on the bird with the, the one eye more partially shut because it probably was in like doing a scratch or something like that, which is why the, the one foot and talons are up there. But yeah, really funny with the, um, the talons all kind of like smushed up and uh, up in the air like that. And uh, you know, again, really nice light, like some of the other ones we've seen here. Just nice, soft, pleasing light. And then a really nice cavity, too, with a lot of uh, character to it. So, you know, for like an in, in-your-face portrait of an owl of a screech like this, it has that extra little bit of something just because of the hilarious kind of like almost expression on the bird and, um, and that foot being up like that. So those are kind of the standout features of that photo to me. And I think I've uh, I've okay, met Donna before. Shout out! This is uh, Donna Mc McKnight's. Donna's yeah. an amazing. So this is a shout out to Donna. Um, I love all her photos. So it was really hard to choose a specific one. I I've always loved owls, screeches especially because they're so hard to find. I like the expression, he's holding his foot up like he's like rubbing his rubbing his talents together like he has like he has some <laughs> evil plan like he's mischievous he's right like, yeah yeah yeah. he's like looking suspiciously at you so it's <laughs> like what what is he concocting in that little brain that's funny so that's really what got me intrigued by this photo yeah you need like the uh the audio caption of just like -ha 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 in the background right <laughs> and he, and he's just so round i mean yeah, very he yeah. just he's so fluffy i mean you just yeah. You Cute just and deadly. Want to reach out through the screen and <laughs> pet them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you ever photographed screech owls before? I have. I uh, actually in the February, I went out with uh, this guy called Peter, named Peter Kristoff in Massachusetts. He's okay. kind of known as the screech owl whisperer. Nice. Um, so I got some really nice, um, nicely lit shots of both red morphs and gray morphs. Oh, sweet. Um, so you'll be seeing some of those from me. Um, Excellent. Yeah. Stay tuned, right? I just, they're so cute, but so like mischievous slash vicious at the same time. It's just, it's really amazing how much emotion can be in that one little being. Yeah. Owls definitely have that about them, right? Definitely a lot of uh, character to them. Uh, I photograph them rarely and I've never photographed a screech outside of like a, like a nest box. So, you know, nothing good. Um, but, you know, any of the owl photos you see, you kind of definitely get that you know, strong personality connection with them, you know, especially when you make eye contact with them in the photo. So that's always a good thing. Right. Nice. All right. Here, I'll bring up the next one for you. Oh, I love <laughs> red neck pheasants. I've actually only seen a couple of them in real life and not, not out in the open like that. So No, right? kudos to the photographer who who captured this one yeah um, because i've always found them um hidden in the shrubbery they t tend to be very uh reclusive and very. there's really no stable population up here so that's another reason i haven't really been able to find them but things perfect on the side of the bird you can kind of see the golden the gold um barring on the side i really Definitely. like that one yeah. Yeah. I mean, to get a photo kind of, of reminds just... me of a peacock with their feathers coming down. Totally. Yeah. 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 To get just a good photo of such a beautiful bird anyway is great, but to have this action on top of it. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So this guy's, um, out of, uh, well, at least this photo up in uh, Nova Scotia, Simon Dittremont. I, probably butchered that last name, but, um, I'll try my best there. Uh, very, really, really good photographer. And, you know, it's funny, this is the kind of thing where, uh, and I think I even commented on this either here or on Facebook where he shared it as well. 
um, you know, I don't know if you had a chance to, to glance, but his caption is like his first thing, oh, how I wish I had more light. So, you know, the, the, his ISO is up at 5,000 and he was just wishing to have things just a little bit more sharp. And uh, this is totally like a typical, you know, photographer complaint, like the photographer who took the photo, you know, where you're just like, oh, it's, it was almost perfect. You know, if only I had this. Meanwhile, like when I see this photo, when he first shared it, I'm just like, what more could you ask for? You know, uh, even the little bit of motion blur there that's happening, even if the head's not sharp, like it doesn't matter. You can totally get the behavior and the action and the, um, just like the fury of these things going after each other. And so, you know, and the soft light actually makes everything like the colors really pop and there's no, you know, no hard light or shadows anywhere. So like all these things I think are amazing about it, but then, you know, the photographer in him, the perfectionist in him is always just like, oh, if it can only be just a little bit better. And I know I can certainly relate because I've done that countless times over the years and, and still certainly do it. So I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, I do that all I do that all the time to I do that all the time to myself. But I'm like, hey, if you capture a cool action or something or a cool behavior that you rarely see, sometimes it's more about content than it is about quality. Totally. Totally agree. Yep. That's a, that's a really good point, Monica. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got next. All right. Speaking about the personality in these owls, huh? <laughs> like this one is, this bird is just like, stop taking my photo. I did too. Um, this one screamed. Yeah. This one uh, screamed right out at me. Yeah. Hilarious. Uh, I mean, it's all about the expression right there, you know? Uh, and so, you know, it, everything else kind of works for it as well. You know, um, we got like this, these interesting bright greens that this thing is perched in. Um, uh, it looks like it's probably on the ground. So, uh, I've very unique kind of habitat. I've never seen a, a shorty, um, in green like this. So I'd be curious to own oh, the Galapagos Island. So yeah, very cool. Um, so yeah, I guess you don't around here, you're not going to see whatever that is growing there. Uh, it's probably no. something pretty unique. Um, but yeah, just having all that green just and then the dark brown bird in it really kind of brings you in. Also, um, again, I haven't photographed a lot of short eared owls, but in most of the photos I've seen, this one is significantly darker than uh, most of them you, that you see. And so I think that also kind of lends to it. It's just like a darker bird. He's look a little bit more dreary and then he's wet and soggy. So it just looks like even more like frumpled and pissed off. So yeah, <laughs> like all that stuff really works. And the fact that you can't see like the top of the, uh, the eyes, like the eyelids are kind of part way down, uh, just really adds to that grumpy look, but yeah, hilarious. Right. Yeah. So this is my friend, Bob Gerard's uh, photo. I'm, he's actually a good friend of the family. So I looked up, look up to a, a lot of his work, especially yeah. this one. Um, and as you know, I'm a huge owl lover. Uh, I've photographed short eards a, a number of times, okay. uh, mainly in New York or Massachusetts, but um, I've never seen one up close like this and the details he got. Um, so around the eyes, it almost looks like he's wearing mascara. Totally. <laughs> like the mascara smeared or something. Yeah. Um. So I'm trying to picture out picture what this bird was doing. I'm thinking he was taking a bath somewhere, or, or maybe it had just rained. Yep. Um. But I love how the the wet, the rain or moisture made his feathers around his neck stick out a little bit. Totally. Yeah. And then you can cut in the on the back side. You can kind of see that some of the inside of his feathers too. So you get. Yep. Different patterns and textures in the picture as well. Yeah, he's definitely seen better days, that bird. <laughs> yeah, this is a cool one. I have some sympathy for him, I, I have to say. Yeah. I feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, and then, and you the know eyebrows. what's funny? Did you see yeah, the eyebrows? Really. It would be hilarious to know. Did you get to, so you said this is a friend of your family, right? Correct. Did you get to uh, talk to him about this photo? Uh, I actually did not. I was going to surprise him today. I told him that I was going to share one of his photos. Um, I actually didn't tell him which one I was going to share. Okay. But so I wanted to surprise him. So no, I haven't gotten a chance to tell him, but. Gotcha. Cause I would just be curious to know what the story was behind the photo. Cause but I adore this photo. Yeah. It's so funny how sometimes 
uh, a photo like this, right? The bird can just look so kind of grumpy and, and it, but it can just be that one little moment, you know, and which is a great thing for a photographer to capture, um, where the bird just happened to look that way. And then shortly after, right, it could have just like ruffled out and then been all clean looking and fine and just flown away and nothing was wrong, you know, but you capture it in that one little moment and it just has, you know, it gives it that, um, that emotion, that, uh, that grumpy look in this case. Right. And, uh, it would be interesting to know, what the situation was with the bird and like how long he spent with it and that kind of thing. So. Right. All right. Moving right along. I got this one for you. (laughs) Oh, well, I'm a baby sucker for sure. Yeah. Babies of any, any animal are adorable. And Oh my goodness. The, and the light is perfect. Uh, Was this taken? I'm almost wondering if the, oh, it was sunset. Yep, sunset, yeah. I'm like, I just want to say the lighting was perfect on this. Yeah. He He's starting to look a little tired. I love seeing the emotions in his face. Just like, ah, oh, my mom's here. I have a full tummy. <laughs> Nothing better in the world. Right. Yeah, pretty cool connection there between the uh, the adult and the the baby there. Um, just having that arm coming down and kind of almost you know like pulling it in and just kind of keeping it close just really gives such uh, such a context of the interaction between the two there. Versus you know if that I mean to me like this is uh, sure if we have a photo of this thing this little guy it's going to be cute no matter what. Uh, but that that simple right. touch right there just takes it absolutely to the next level because if this arm was just hanging behind the uh the young kangaroo there or on the inside of it i don't think it would have nearly the same impact it would still be a great photo technically and lighting and all that stuff but that connection just really really makes it so yeah all right ready move on to the next one i love seeing the hand i didn't their hands their paw their paws are almost human like actually if you look at the the one hanging down i didn't realize that so that's pretty intriguing on that side there yeah they're definitely separated yeah that's pretty cool yeah and shelly pearson amazing pretty photographer cool. from australia so uh definitely worth a follow i mean all these photographers are so all right we'll jump to the next one here this made me crack up when you sent it i was dying laughing at this thing <laughs> This thing looks so, I mean, baby any wading birds always look so ridiculously rough. Uh, They are so far from like cute uh, sometimes, but they're like an ugly cute, I should say. Uh, And then this thing with um, the the mouth open like that, begging for the food is just, I mean, hilarious. And then on top of it, um, you know, really nice low perspective from the photographer. Uh, Who is this? Abby, it looks like. Um, this is my friend Abby from uh, okay yeah so really nice low perspective uh, great light really soft light Uh, I love the grass here and then from that low perspective just super buttery background so uh, zero distraction from anything else and it's just all about this little baby bird and that uh, crazy wide open beak like that so yeah I mean just hilarious photo so uh, nicely chosen yeah, I don't, I don't know how exactly how she t- she took it, but my guess is she was lying on the ground for it. Yeah. Um, lucky her because I've ne- I've actually never seen a green heron baby out of the nest, so mm. to have it on the ground kind of brings bring kind of brings a whole new perspective to it, and it makes it look even more like a a dinosaur. Totally. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you can does. actually see the tongue, which is kind of which is kind of neat. Yeah. Neat and creepy at the same time. <laughs> Needless to say, this baby really wasn't pleased. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I can imagine the sounds that were coming out of this thing's mouth too. You know, these baby, these any of these young wading birds always are just such a beautiful sound. No, I'm kidding. Like if you've ever been to like a wading bird rookery, the sounds that come out of that <laughs> yeah. thing are just horrendous. <laughs> oh, oh, they're scary for sure. Yeah. Like if you were ever a person that had no idea like that those birds made that sound and you were like, say, camping in an area near them and then night fell and then you started hearing those sounds, you would probably run screaming like what in the hell is out there? You know, I know I would. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, really funny photo. Thanks for sharing that one. All right, we got the uh, last one here. Ooh, I love the moody tones in the background. Yeah. I've never, I've, I've never actually seen an elk. I'm assuming Me neither. this is an elk. Yep. Um, I've never actually seen one, so that's really cool. It's amazing how big their antlers are. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And I love the pattern. If you look at the top of the sky in the background, they yep. kind of almost look like, I don't know, horns or deer in the background. Yeah, I think it's just the distant trees, like, through the fog. Oh, in fact, it says, yeah, like, on adjacent hilltops, you know. Yeah, so it just must be, like, another distant hill through the fog kind of thing. Yeah, it's wild. Any, anything else on that one? I just really like the background on that one and how how dark and just somber it is cool yeah you know almost like almost like before a storm totally yeah yeah and i think he said it's after the sun went down so um you know uh, a great uh, certainly great advice for for all photographers to to not just pack it up when the sun goes away you know to stay and try and push things a little bit further and see what may come of that um and it's funny the first i think the first descriptive word you used of this was you said you love the mood of this and that was the first thing that came into my mind when i first saw this was like wow the mood on this photo is just incredible such a moody photo um so yeah and this photographer is uh pretty amazing so um you know just like all the photographers that we shared today uh certainly all worth a follow and uh yeah that was it nice job we wrapped it up um i'll bring it back up to your uh, profile here um just so uh everybody can uh kind of get a, a another idea of some of the stuff that you share with your wildlife nice with the clapper rail they're always tough um and so oh, it, it walked right up to me i'm telling did you it? Oh, that's amazing. That's really, really cool. And then Wimbrel, right? And then if anybody's interested, uh, um, I have a video of a fisher. Actually, a fisher walked right up to my feet. What? So if you're really looking for an ad I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. It walked right up to my feet. Is that on here on Instagram? So, yeah, if you go up a little farther. Up? Yeah, there's a video of it. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Oh, right here. Yeah, there we go. Right next gotcha. to the sun. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Wow. How cool is that? When was this? This was a couple months ago. Okay. But Look, it seems really carefree. Like it wasn't bothered by you at all, right? Or did it, it I mean, obviously it had to be aware of you, right? I mean, it walked right up the path to me. So, I mean, I mean, I just stood there. I was kind of yeah. shocked. <laughs> That's so cool. But I mean, that was that was taken with a cell phone, so yeah, yeah. But. Very cool, nice stuff. Well, Monica, thank you so much for joining me. Um, really appreciate some of the photos you picked out, and appreciate you setting aside some time. Uh, so certainly, everybody, uh, check out Monica's profile, Walking underscore underscore Google One. And uh, as far as all the other photographers, if you didn't catch the uh, profiles as we went through them, I'll include links to each one of their profiles in the caption on the video. So you can always uh, link directly to them. And in fact, I'll probably just link to each photo. So that way you can just kind of check it out and then get to their profile from there. So um, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this. And I have okay. a few other photographers lined up to try and uh, continue doing the same thing. So they'll come on, pick some of their favorite photos, and I'll pick some more of mine and we'll share them. And uh, yeah, we'll see if I can keep this thing going. So Monica, thanks again so much and have a great night. Thank you for having me. You too. You're welcome.